I got town council. Oh, thanks, Jeff. Okay. I've never um, I think I'm pretty sure he um, okay. did say he was going to come today, so he may hopefully he will show up soon. But I'll go through the opening reading here. Um, let's see. Um, public participation guidelines. Members of the public wishing to participate in the meeting must use their full name for Zoom access. If full names are not used, people will not be allowed to participate in the discussion. The town reserves the right to remove any member of the public from the meeting who doesn't use a full name or acts inappropriately. We are using Zoom for this meeting, which allows the public to participate in the meeting as an attendee. Uh, let's see. Attendees will join in listening mode. They can click the raise hand button if they wish to speak. Uh, the chair will call on. I will attempt to call on those people in order who have raised hands in the order that they were raised. Um, all questions should be directed through the chair. Um, as a preliminary matter, this is Joe Grouse, chair of the town council study committee. Please per uh, permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Uh, members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Caroline. Hi. Rachel. Hi. Jeff. Hi. Curtis. Yes. Bo. Hi. Tom. Here. Jeremy. Yes. Uh, Donna? Just wave, Donna. Uh, yep, here's yeah. Kelly. Okay. Uh, Kelly, say aye for me, please. Aye. Nice. That's good. Um, there are no members of staff in the meeting today. Sorry. I'm like spreading. And we have no anticipated outside speakers. This uh, meeting is going to be an internal discussion. Um, good afternoon. This is this open meeting. Uh, Okay, uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, this open meeting of the Town Council Study Committee is being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such particip participation is required by law. This meeting does not figure uh, feature public comment. Uh, for this meeting, the Town Council Study Committee is convened by video conference via the Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by, that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Uh, all supporting materials uh, have been provided to this, uh, all, all supporting materials that have been provided to members of this body are that are available or will be available on the town's website. I think there's gonna be some handouts that are we've brought along. Um, the public is encouraged to follow along alert using the posted agenda, um, period. Uh, I'm ad living here a little. Um, meeting, let's see, we're now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. Uh, I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. I think we're just going to be the group here. Um, and then if there are any questions, I will allow members of the committee to ask them. Uh, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. And please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. Uh, um, for any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. Um, okay, I think that, I think that about covers it. There's 20 minutes to... Rachel, are you going to... Uh, no way. <laughs> Does I, I thought you were, but if you want me to, I can do them. What? what the, pink, the pink slip, did you guys take it was take it to the door? No pink slip? No. Fired. <laughs> Someone's getting fired. <laughs> as long as it's not me, bro. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess it's Can me. we prevail upon you one more yep, time? Yeah, sure. We should rotate it. We should, and I, so, somebody think about volunteering for the next time, other than Rachel or Curtis. Uh, okay, so we've called, us, called the meeting to order. Um, I think we need a, a, a vote to accept the agenda. Can I have a move motion to accept move. the agenda? Second? Second. Second. Okay, we're gonna have to go around the room. Curtis? Aye. Bo? Aye. Tom? Aye. Jeremy? Aye. Anna? Aye. Jeff? Hi, Kelly. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Caroline. Hi, Joe. Hi. Okay. Uh, the town council study committee is being recorded, uh, which I think we all knew. Uh, step four on the agenda is approval of the minutes of the February seventh, 
uh, meeting. I hope you all had a chance to read them since that meeting was actually supposed to take place two weeks ago. Um, are there any questions or edits um, about the minutes? They were so good, Rachel. They were really good. Thank <laughs> you for doing this. Thank you. All right. Second. My value. Second. Second. <laughs> All right. Go around the room. Curtis. Aye. Bo. Aye. Tom. Aye. Jeremy. Aye. Donna. Aye. Yep. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Rachel. Aye. Caroline. Aye. Joe. Aye. Okay. Um, what I thought I would do, I, I basically, the, the agenda for this, uh, for our discussion that's on the back of the minutes or with your minutes. Um, I wanted to just update a few people on, uh, update you all on a couple of things that have happened in the, I guess the, the months or since we last met. Um, we did, I think we discussed the last time we were together, um, engaging a consultant or a facilitator for the group. Uh, we did receive a proposal from the Collins Center uh, who've made a presentation to us. I, I think it was the last meeting we were together. Um, they proposed um, supporting the committee um, I, I, in terms of both, I guess, being a resource as well as helping us through the next steps of our of the process. Um, I did have an opportunity to meet with, with um, Libby yesterday to basically make sure that we had the money to, to pay for this, which we do. There's there's sufficient funds, I guess, in the Nantucket County budget to pay for um, the proposed price. Um, <laughs> And we, but we, but Libby felt that their proposal was a little general, and so um, I sent um, Anthony Wilson a response this morning that basically asked them to spend a little less time on, on background and sort of general information, and a little more time on um, um, helping us with sort of public outreach issues and helping us with the, if you will, the administrative work of creating a town charter that. Um, supports the town, town council form of government, which I think are really the two biggest chunks of our... In other words, let's get it done. Well, that, that's my feeling. But <laughs> if you if you kind of get back to the... And again, I see this as an open discussion, this, this meeting. Um, are we all... I mean, it's the committee. Are we all decided that forming it, you know, going forward with a town council form of government is what we're going to do? Or are there still members of the committee who feel... That question hasn't been adequately answered yet. I definitely don't think it's been adequately answered for me. I'm I haven't I've been listening carefully to try to be um convinced since that's what we're actively supposed to be talking about. And I, I I'm just not yet convinced. I found it very interesting in the last meeting when the Collins Center um spoke to us about how there are improvements. There's not a lot of research on how to improve town meeting um, that they've done. They're not a research group, but they have a lot of very specific ways of recommending that town meeting be improved. And then, of course, we all received from the town um, the debriefing from 2010, um, where they assembled a, a, um, a task force, or a, I don't know if it was a committee, but it was a specific group to look at why that turnout that year had been so low. I think it was 700 or something. Um, and there were a lot of really specific feedback and suggestions. And I haven't yet heard of whether the town of Nantucket's implemented any of that to, to repair town meeting um, and the turnout and the, the energy around it, or, or even the way that we vote, whether there could be an electronic vote or a hybrid model, and to certainly to add uh, town meetings so that we have some more expediency. Mm -hmm. So I'm still interested in in hearing more about that. And and as the Collins Center said last meeting, um, there's a um, how did how did they put it? There's a new trend um, around community engagement and even a community engagement provision that they've um, they've been seeing in Massachusetts towns to increase that. Curtis? I heard you say that this was in 2010. There was a debriefing. Yeah. Well, if nothing's been done since 2010, I think it's time to move on to a better form. I'm puzzled about why nothing. I'm puzzled I'm if puzzled anything too, has when, been when done. You mentioned why, if they did a debriefing, what have they done in 10, 
12 years. Yeah. I, and if nothing, I think we're in the position to move forward in a better way. But Curtis, why wouldn't we be in the position to try to take that feedback from 2010, which is certainly, I think we'd all agree, if we, you know, we've all looked at it. It's all what we would feel is true um, today. Why wouldn't we try to, in the meantime, while we're working on, on this, why wouldn't we um, ask the town or the town manager to pick up the um, energy around uh, making those repairs? Can I ask which things were that were identified do you think were not addressed since 2010? Well, I'm thinking right now, um, just going back to the Collins Center and mm -hmm. what, um, I can't remember, what was the woman's name, the one that was being proposed as a consultant for us? Um, I can't think of her I name. Don't, I don't right remember, now. but um, But she, she had made mention of a couple things. One is um, that the town manager is often given a specific assignment to increase community engagement by um, in, increasing community outreach to those who aren't typically involved. And I don't know, in our case, maybe, maybe it wouldn't, maybe it's not Libby, but maybe it's some sub group of, of Libby, um, of the town manager's office who would undertake that. I'm not sure it has been undertaken. Um, they also suggested spreading town meeting out over three days. Um, they suggested adding a couple of town meetings they um, suggested adding the electronic vote and having it be hybrid. Um, she said it was very unique to each community. And I would say that more than anything, the thing that stands out to me is that Nantucket is not only unique, but it's singular. I mean, there's there's nothing, there's really no community that you could even compare it to. And so it would be very hard for us to take a model and put it onto Nantucket um, so why not try to fix our model that we have while we're also talking about town council? I, hey, Joe. I, yeah, I, I, Jeremy, I see the idea hands up. Um, hang, hang on one sec. I just want to say, I, I disagree. I think the town has made a lot and maybe Jeff is, could fill in and may, where I might have blanks, but my time at the town in the role that I had, even as the assistant town manager, I saw a lot of work and a lot of public outreach change and a lot of alternative ways that they did try to tackle moving from weekends to different days to spreading it out in the evening on, you know, trying different things. Mm -hmm. um, the electronic voting, I, I think they have done a lot of work in that. The only thing that I heard that I don't think has been done, or I don't know if there was discussion, was breaking it up so that there was just one town meeting dedicated to zoning yeah. and one for other things. That's the only thing I heard that I didn't think we've tried as a town mm -hmm. that has provided any results so i don't know maybe maybe we need a little response to beyond any like attempts that have made or changes that have been made or something like that but mm -hmm. i just know from what i've seen in my own participation with different things they've made some adjustments through the years i would i wouldn't say they've done nothing since this 2010 I, thank you for clarifying and um so then then it would bring us to if those things have been implemented, why do we all think that it hasn't worked? Is it because we only have one all town meeting a year and would we need to just add uh, as one for zoning and one for general and add and use utilize more special town meetings? How come we haven't done that yet? Um. I'd like to let Jeremy's been patient waiting for to, to make a point. So Jeremy, fire away. I, I think, um, I don't think we as a committee are ready yet to move to what form of government we should adopt. Because as I mentioned earlier, we have yet to truly define the problem we're seeking to solve. And we could go forward. We may think we have done that, but I haven't heard um, the problems that we're trying to solve. And I think until we have that really understood, all of these other efforts to what form of government to, to, um, to select and propose, 
you, you will fail when it comes time for the voters to take this up. We have not defined the issue we are solving for. And I've heard some things that say, well, it might be uh, timeliness of getting grants and we're missing out money. But I think at one point people thought that was for the airport and the airport has disabused us of that. That was in fact not the case. Is it just voter turnout? We don't have enough people? I don't know. But I think unless this committee actually defines succinctly what it is we're solving to, to fix, you will we will fail when the voters pick it up. Thank you. Um, Donna? Um, I think over the, the, the few meetings we've had, we've, we've actually talked about this at great length. We talked about the fact that there's very little participation and the expediency is required uh, to keep government involved and, and vibrant. So we almost at every meeting, we've been discussing this, I thought, seemed to me. Okay. Sure, go for it. So I, I, I think, and Carolina, I, I definitely hear what you're saying about it, but I think also the issues that we need to address are bigger than just town meeting itself, right? Is when we're looking at changing the charter and changing the form of government is we're having to evaluate how the charter itself is performing. And I think we're seeing deficiencies that are most obvious in town meeting because they're the ones that are glaringly apparent, right? Just we attend and we go. But I think there are other things in there that that need to be looked at. It's just not a attendance issue to town meeting. I know for myself personally, I just feel that we don't act efficiently enough as a government to keep up with the reality of the times we're living in is having a legislative body that meets for one or even two days a year to make all of the legislative decisions for the island is just not it's just not realistic in my opinion anymore. It's too slow, it's too cumbersome. Just the process to get the town meeting is is incredible. I mean, just the time it takes, you know, the there's the warrant article submission from citizens. There's the review time, which I, I think is valuable. There's the publishing of the warrant. There's getting to it. And then there's the town meeting. I mean, it's a, a six-month process in at best to get to annual town meeting with many committee meetings. And then a great burden for people to attend and, and make great decisions on, you know, the last town meeting was, again, over 100 articles. It's it's an incredible task to do and have people take the time out to do, but it makes us very slow and unwieldy. And, you know, I, I, I agree with the concept of, you know, government, government will never be as fast as the private sector and that's okay. That's totally fine, but it certainly needs to be faster than what it is now and more efficient. And I think that this is the, my hopes and, and to get to Jeremy's question of what the problem is, we're inefficient and we function too slowly. We are not responsive enough. Oh. All right, so I have a hypothesis, not theory, but um, since I just started looking at the charter and coming to sort of understand what the separation of powers are, the charter and the functions, various bodies. One of the things that's glaring and is starting to stand out is that the select board is sort of morphing into this quasi town town council already, and that is taking legislative function away from the legislative body. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't directly vote, but it does craft legislation. That happened at the STR thing, at the airport meeting. We found out that. There were zoning things that were being crafted. And I mean, to me, it means that the charter is being sort of ignored. That's one of the problems. And I agree with Jeremy. Okay, we, we actually need to do more work. Um, but doing more work means to look at, you know, meetings, minutes, 
and go see what is actually being done. Okay, and what is the charter? So what does it say in the charter and what is this group doing? All right, so and again, going back to my legislation is we, or the legislative body is weak. There are ways to strengthen it, yes. Okay, but the, the, the trend in government is that the, as you get bigger, as the issues become more complicated, then the, 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 the smaller the legislative body gets. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, I, and again, I agree with Jeremy. I think so, 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 so is, that, is that a good thing? Or I'm not sure if that, you see that as a good thing or a bad thing, Bob. No, I think it's just the trend in government. And, I, and, and again, I, yeah. going back to the select board, Okay, there are cultural things that we do in this town that are just maybe different. Maybe we've always delegated power to the select board. And I think um, I think that's probably always been the case. The people that I talked to or have been on the, the finance committee forever, they've said, okay, well, the, typically the select board crafts legislation and then they hand it to the um, to, to town meeting and see if they would ratify it, right? But According to the charter, it's not really right. Okay, the, the executive branch is the executive branch. You're not supposed to touch legislative part. But there may be a reason why they're doing it. Okay, if the town council would be doing that, there may be a reason why, for instance, they get involved in zoning or they get involved in STR. Okay, or they get involved in various little things. Like, I, and those may be cultural, or they, it may be that what's actually happening is that the legislative body can't really keep up with all the legislative demands. And it takes specialized people in the select board or yeah, that right. have legal ability, that have consultants, that have people that are specialized to give them the information they need to craft in the legislation. Okay, so I don't think it's slowly becoming a town council in a quasi way. All right, and I think that's part of solving Jeremy's problem here. They're already moving in that direction. You just have to formalize it. Okay, and you have to, you kind of have to <clears throat> spell it out, like spell it out in the charter. This is your function. And you have to formalize it in a way that says, okay, we know the process now because there's murkiness when the legislative branch starts or the executive branch starts taking over parts of the uh, the executive or the executive starts taking over parts of the legislative. There is too much murkiness in that. You need to have defined roles. That's my uh Thank you. Um... Jeremy, you're, uh, I've got a couple of hands up here. So, Jeremy, I'll take you, and then and Curtis, I'm going to let you talk. Jeremy, um, it it strikes me we we have reasons to to do this change to try and increase voter participation by making the uh, the annual form of government easier to deal with. Um, we want greater efficiency in in the government, and the turnaround time of decision making is cumbersome at best right now. And more expertise is most likely these days required than it was historically, because the uh, the problems are bigger and the size of the government is bigger. We we can we can continue to work on I would propose on expanding such a list and trying to get some specificity to that, while at the same time in parallel we work on what is the optimal form of a council government. They could address those issues. Okay. okay. Was there someone else with their hand up, Donna? Yeah. Um, Bo, I think, was saying actually another reason to go into a town council form of government is there's actually more transparency. So you have expediency, more participation, more transparency, and opportunity for um, expertise. And all that can come with town council. Um, and, and when John Giorgio spoke to us, 
he did say the easiest thing we could do would be to amend the charter. Um, and it would just require a special act charter change, I think he said. Um, the other thing is I'm wondering how many people on our committee um, are for at this point, because we've been discussing this for quite a few meetings, um, are, are for a, a change in town council and how many have reservations? It, I'd, I'd like to see who's who's where. Um, to, be, to be honest, Anna, I would too, but I, I would kind of like this discussion to go on a little bit, make sure everyone's going to say before I sort of either take a straw poll or so. Um, but but I, I agree, I, I'm with you. Um, <laughs> There's an awful lot to unpack on all that, and I don't want to be in the position of either defending the form of government that we have now. My position on this committee as a select board member is to tell you what kind of work we've been doing and how it goes and things like that. However, there, there, there are a couple of things that, that have been said that are that are just flat out wrong, and and, and I think that we may need to... I can make some notes and maybe send them to the chair and then we can um, maybe, you know, maybe don't want to hear that from me. Maybe you should hear it from somebody who works for the town or something like that. But um, it, Mr. Chair, if I, if I may, to, through you to Donna, Donna, the word transparency, um, I, I can't, I mean, being a select board member for almost a year now, we are subject to open meeting law. Everything that we deliberate on is in public. All our agendas are posted 48 hours by law. Um, everything that we discuss is in public. I, 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 you may not have meant that in a, in a derogatory sense, but, no. <laughs> I but did not, really, if I may ask you to clarify, I just don't want anybody to get the, the wrong impression mm -hmm. with the no. word transparency. Mm -hmm. um, if I may clarify that then, Tom, sure. not at all. I was not referring to the um, the actions of the select board. I was talking about the fact that if you have more meetings um, with the town council, uh, um, by the fact that people can interact more often, um, and there are committees and subcommittees and all that, then there's more participation and there's more transparency. Not that we don't have transparency now. That is not my point. So we meet more than many town councils. Um, I had, we have four meetings next week um, for, for a select board in various, in various things, license and petitions, select board, joint meeting with the FinCom planning board and, and um, and whatever other one I'm blanking on, and uh, and we have executive session on Thursday morning. I, I mean, all this stuff is posted. The agendas are there. And the the ability for public everybody is the ability to come public comment and bring up anything that's not in the agenda. As you all saw, I'm sure uh, our our last meeting we had an emergency item added, which was the joint meeting with the airport commission and the board of health. That hasn't happened since I was on there before. The, the chair is, a, is allowed to do that. We had that meeting. I'm sure some of you were watching on, on Monday night. That, that was many hours and very good, fully transparent, all subject to open meeting law. I mean, I, I, I'm kind of at a loss after being on this for a year um, it, it, to get back to Jeremy's kind of macro point. Um, if it's participation that we're trying to solve or whatever whatever X is that we're trying to solve. Um, to me, that those aren't the issue. As a, and again, I'm speaking as a select board member who's been on there 10 months now. Those are not issues. Um, but again, th that's that's just me. I mean, you know, you can talk to Matt or Brooke or Dawn or Libby or Erica or whoever else about it as well. Um, if, if I might just say... Huh? Go ahead, Joe. What? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I just I'm just trying to be keep things in a rotation. Jeremy, you were your hand was up first. Sorry, Donna. I, I it was only up because I for, I couldn't figure out how to bring it down. <laughs> never, so oh. is that a never mind? I can do that for you. <laughs> um, All right, Donna, go for it. I got uh, it. Yeah, I again it is the select board actually could even move over and become town council. We're talking about the whole ball of wax, not just we're not talking about eliminating, if you will, 
people on the select board. The select board's doing a phenomenal job. And um, I am not saying anything <laughs> about the select board. <laughs> but I could just, that was really good. please, Tom, I am not saying anything about the select board. <laughs> I, I got it, Donna. Thank you. Free You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it, 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 you know, this committee was it was really the brainchild of Curtis, and so I'm going to ask him to. You you made some notes, and um, I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about your your the, the memo you sent me uh, a couple of days ago. But I did want to remind everybody. I mean, the purpose of this committee, as stated in the article from the town meeting, is to uh, you know basically create a town a charter to implement a town council form of government. And I think our options are kind of either to do that. Or to say that, gee, we really don't think that's justified. You know, our charter is not to recommend going down to representative town meeting um, or, or, hold the respect, propose tweaks to current open town meeting. Um, so that's one thing I wanted to, you know, mention. Number two, um, Jeremy, you know, brought up the issue of, you know, what we have to be clear about uh, what the issues are with current the current structure. And I just want to remind everybody that back on January 10th, we had a discussion about the pros and cons and what the strengths and weaknesses of town meeting. And we came up with seven or eight issues or, or uh, items that basically discuss what are the problems with, with um, open town meeting. And they dealt with many of the things that folks have been talking about, you know, access to the electorate, um, efficiency, dealing with, with, issue, you know, with business and, and other uh, issues on a more timely manner. So I do think we've, dealt with a lot of that. Um, uh, and then I guess I would just throw my own personal opinion. I, you know, I, I came onto this committee, um, you know, with the goal of trying to reach a town council form. I, I do think open town meeting has sort of um, outlived its usefulness. And um, so I, I guess I am personally of the, of the mind that it's time to move on and Create a, a, char a charter that implements town council and to come up with public outreach strategies to help us sell that to the, the electorate of town uh, of the town. But let me finish my little monologue. And I think we ought to talk to the let the Godfather speak here. Oh God. You know what happened to the Godfather? You dropped dead in the garden. It's not funny to do that. Um, I did make some notes and I have copies to share with everyone, but I in response to some of the comments at the last meeting, I did go on uh, YouTube and watch all of it. Um, I just re-emphasize what our charter is. And this is the article that was submitted and voted at town meeting, which is to look at establishing a town council. If we decide not to establish a town council, and this committee has to recommend no action and we're gone because that's the article, act on the article. I do also want to comment very briefly that um, I've, I've outlined some steps here which I would prefer to take, like nine counselors and four-year terms and rolling over the existing board to keep the experience. This is all of this, which I give all of you. Um, but I want to remind you that a town council, and I went to Barnstable as a stranger, um, a non-resident taxpayer who can't go in to town meeting uh, unless they sit in a stranger's gallery, can go to the town council. And I'm looking at uh, May, June, July, or July, August, September, the time when non-resident taxpayers are here, and they're going to be able to go to those meetings and share their concerns, which they can't do directly now. The other constituency that doesn't uh, have much access are the people who live here who but, but are not voters or not citizens. And there's a lot of that community that has concerns and they're worried about the schools and the kids and everything else, they can go to the town council and speak, whereas they would not be allowed into town meeting. So those are a couple of reasons. I'm here because I proposed the article. 
my objective is to help us move to a town council form of government, which I think is going to be much more efficient. I have uh, brought the town organization chart to the hand up. I brought the organization chart for Barnstable, which is a model I've been looking at. And they're all here to take home when you're done, if you want to look at them. But um, I feel our charge is to decide whether we're going to do a town council or to say we're not going to do it and close the committee. <clears throat> okay. Anybody else? I mean, Sorry. thank you, Curtis. Uh, um, I was going to sort of echo what you said. My, I have notes from December 20th, though, with a, a list of eight, and I've just heard two more things that we could easily add to this list as to why not annual town meeting. Um, I mean, I could read those out, but I think we've sort of done it in different ways, and we can certainly um, make them unique to Nantucket with maybe an example or something to get people to understand it, such as what Jeremy was suggesting. Um, I personally, thank you, Curtis, I wasn't even thinking of the large population of maybe non-voting citizens or non-citizens who are not able residents. to vote, residents vote who are part of our community. community. So very, very much. Yes, I wasn't even, I was thinking non-voting taxpayers as well. Um, so that's one of them, better input from non-voting taxpayers. Um, I mean, like I said, there's a whole list here. And I think if we just combine our notes and what we have, we could get a more solid list. And in terms of maybe transparency isn't the right word in terms of what Donna's saying. I I mean, I'm I I echo what Tom says. I think there's a lot of transparency in what the select board does. There's a lot of participation options, there's a lot of avenues that people can go but they are not the ones that can do the authorizations that has to wait till town meeting. So it's great that all these meetings, there's all these commissions, there's all these boards, there's all these groups that are meeting all over the place and they have all different projects or all different avenues or things or goals, like what we saw with the airport, for instance, that just happened. And then they order something happens that brings people together to say, wait a minute, this is not, the way that should be happening. This is not how the communication should be going. So I think maybe the the point, and I'm sure Donna can correct me if I'm wrong, is not so much that the select board doesn't meet a lot, that it's not that they're not reviewing a lot. It's that they do that, but then they they can only go so far until town meeting. And I think the yes. intent here is the efficiency is in where we can do more of the authorizations versus once or twice a year and the actual work of the government to get moving on those things rather than continue it at that level, which is great. And I would say from the inside, I've had a lot of frustration through the years where I've been in those meetings, hours and hours and hours and hundreds of paper on a subject and you come to something and then you go to town meeting and it sort of starts to crumble because there isn't as many people who have been able to do that. And I think that was part of one of those reasons on why town meeting isn't working for us the way it should be. Um, and so I don't know if that's really where we need to go is to just bring that list together, solidify it, talk through it and find those examples. And I sort of agree with Bo. We're already traveling towards a council as it is in many ways, in terms of recommendations that the select board does or FinCom and all the different groups. But in order to bring all those different groups together to have that understanding, because I don't go to all the FinComs, I don't go all of the Capcom meetings, but I hear at town meeting what their recommendation was. I'm not going to sift through all those meetings and review hundreds of minutes of meetings to understand where they developed that but if there had more of that, I could go to those meetings and get more of that knowledge right then and there as the decision is being made. So I think that's where the efficiency part is being discussed. I'm not exactly sure transparency is the right word for that, though, because I do think there is a lot of transparency. There's a lot of information out there and ways for people to participate if they want. But when you go to town meeting where your voice and your vote really counts, you can't say anything for a large portion of our population. And that's one of the problems we're trying to address. So I think we're just so scattered in where everybody's focus and goal is that if there's a way to get that list and just solidify it and have that be our jumping point, then maybe some of this would be understood. Because I mean, I agree with Tom with the way the slip board works and the transparency. But I, I think in terms of what Donna is saying, 
they can they they sort of go to a point and they can do certain things as they're allowed by charter, but they can't do it all. And the council is what would tie all that back together. I don't Thank know. You. It was a long-winded <laughs> explanation. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, Donna, you had uh, a comment? Yeah, um, something that Curtis brought up, which I think is very important, um, is that non-voting taxpayers will have much more of an opportunity to have, if you will, uh, a voice, maybe uh, an enhanced role or something, whereas we don't with the ATM. And and we're, we're a pretty large group. Yeah, thanks, Donna. Yeah, I, I think you hear what everyone's saying, and I, I agree with Tom. The, the town puts a lot of effort into transparency. I, I think the better word, and it's actually two that came to mind, is focused accessibility. It's not okay. untransparent or, or, or murky like that. It's people have a hard time knowing where to go and involving themselves in the process on issues from start to finish because most of them go through some level of advisory board and then go to you know select board and then go to fincom and then go to town meeting and for someone to have the stamina to maintain through that process is can be difficult to do and i think if you create opportunity for people to access the hub of the wheel that's always the hub of the wheel it makes it much easier for people to have access to government and i i think the select board does a, a good job of providing people an avenue to provide public comment and can get that there. But I I think that's where you start to drift to what we're talking about, converging towards town council a little bit. And I think the other part that, that goes with that too is you want people to be excited about interacting with the government and being a part of their community and involving as many people as you can to provide their thoughts and inputs to what's happening. And that can be difficult now, too. And I remember the last point I was going to make, and I promise I'll stop talking. Um, no, I just forgot what I was going to say <laughs> when I said that. Um, I, I you hate what you I were know. saying people, you want people to be excited to be part of the... No, it was something unrelated to that, and I don't remember what it was now. Oh, I remember. Is the, uh... Do you think, um, could I say, maybe, Jeff, do you think the word is centralized? Would that be something that you could say about a town council? Is that we're actually attempting to centralize functions, perhaps? Well, I, I think we do that a little bit already, right? Obviously, the select board is the hub of the wheel for us here, mm -hmm. for the executive and the town manager's office. Um, so I'm not sure that's the word, but I, I think my other point that I was going to make really quickly is Barnesville does a good job of this. They still have a town meeting. They meet mm -hmm. every year and... You know, I joke and explain it to people. It's like the old Seinfeld Festivus airing of grievances where anyone can come and say, I want this discussed. I want this issue to come up in front of in front of the council or be put in front of a subcommittee or into a department. Anyone can still bring that up. And there's still ways, even with town council, for citizen petition for legislative action. I mean, you're not taking that away. So all of those things still still go, but I I, I think and I, I hear frustration from people to say, I need to get in the sewer district because my septic system has failed. But I'm waiting until town meeting because I need to get put into the sewer district. So I have to wait nine months because it's, you know, it's July. That's the way it works. So you're going to be running on a failed septic system for nine months until you get approved and then get constructed. So I think that's where efficiency comes in. And with the two is we can expect better ways for people to get more immediate access, especially on issues that we think are important and have the expertise to make that happen. Uh, you know, yeah, it just it just makes me think to play devil's advocate a little bit that there that e even if even if we snapped our fingers and made this happen, there's still a lot of trade-offs that, that would happen. Because if you had a for argument's sake, a nine-member town council, they would likely, I'm just guessing, probably be paid ten thousand dollars, ten thousand two hundred, like Barnesville Town Count. They'd be part time. Who's going to serve? They would be responsible the same way myself as a select board member, responsible to constituents and emails and people stopping me and stopping shops. Part of the, I love that. That's part of the reason why I ran. Um, also, if members of FinCom and the planning board and all the top boards, right? 
their email addresses are all on the town website. Mm -hmm. They they can they're accessible. A lot of people know them, and some people don't, right? But their email anybody can send an email to all of them at once and say like, "Hey, I have a question about Article Forty, whatever." Um, it, yes, it would be centralized, which I think is a kind of sketchy word. It, it makes you think of kind of communism or something, but uh, in government, but. Um, <clears throat> Uh, yes, it would be centralized, but I think those layers of the ability for people to reach out and get those questions answered are there currently. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with you. Uh, Jeremy, your, your hand was up next, I think. Yeah, I, I was just wanted to respond and move things forward based on what Curtis was saying. Is um, I think we've defined the problem, and my only real concern was getting it more specific so that the ultimate outcome of this effort can be sold to the um, uh, to the voters. But um, just to move this forward, I think it is a good idea to move um, forward towards a change of government. And please take my comments on defining the problem as trying to figure out how to get it sold down the road. I, oh, I, I agree with you on that one. Um, Anybody else have something else? Yeah. Kelly, you want to make a comment? I, I just thought your hand was raised a second ago, but I'll go ahead. Um, I think something I've been wrestling with is looking at OTM and RTM and town council is like how, and even with the, the, the why not list of open town meeting, how much, how many of those things still exist in any of these new forms of government? How do we, what about voter engagement? Had, that almost that almost seems for town council it doesn't apply anymore because now you have kind of almost not forced but you, forced feels like the wrong word but you have, you have people showing up you have a you do have people showing up to vote instead of eighty percent of the island not showing up um, representation representation is now consolidated so how I, I'm sure we can find if we move towards town councils a town council adequate way to create representation. But for me, a lot of those questions just still exist, and I don't know the pros and cons. I haven't felt like we've elicited the pros and cons of the different forms of town government and how that cre increases voter engagement, how that in makes a more inclusive vote voting populace, as well as access. I think the other thing I'm thinking about is access to education. How do we make information accessible and digestible? And I go, I, yeah, I don't see none of these... So far, none of these seem like obvious ones that enhance any of those. And I think that's just, I'm sorry, it's a question, not a conclusion, but that's definitely something I've been struggling with the last few post meetings. All right. Well, I think we've had a pretty good roundtable discussion on this. Um, I guess I would like, personally, I would like to take a straw poll. I mean, in terms of voting members of the committee, um, you know, where do people stand on this? I mean, in terms of, do we need to do, do we need to continue to do more sort of generalized research and fact finding or information gathering about government forms and how they operate um, or specifics about the town of Nantucket? Or are we sort of ready to kind of turn, uh, you know, towards a more proactive, um, you know what might that what might the town charter what might the structure of a of a town council form be for Nantucket, and what is the public outreach that we need to think about and design and think about to actually try to make that win win the at the ballot. Um, well, I I'm just recalling our uh, agenda and for today, and I was uh, hoping that in looking it over and and going through it. I was hoping that part of our conversation before we would get to the straw poll that the that um, Donna raised is that we would have a chance to talk about. Um, sorry, I don't have mine. That's it. Oh yes. Okay. Um, let's see that. Um, let's see. We we have discussed actually going out there and asking um, voters what they're thinking and we haven't done that yet um and that feels to me very important because yes we've been 
voted on um, the town meeting to go through this process. But we also have said to ourselves in the beginning and as we're forming, that we know it's very important to hear from Nantucketers, how their ideas, how they're feeling, because that will inform our process, which it should. And then that would also give us the best chance, whatever we come up with, to package it so that it is approved by the select board and approved by, and um, you know, that the voters like whatever we might come up with. And we haven't done that yet. So I think we're, our process is missing that microphone that we would go around and and ask people how they're feeling. That seems missing. I, well, I have to jump in on that and tell you that I, I mean I think that that's that gathering voter and citizen input could be part of a public outreach process. But I don't think you go out to the population and say, you know, who probably doesn't have the faintest idea what the town council form of government is, and say, gee, what do you think of town council form of government? And do you think it's a good idea to convert from what we have today to the open town meeting? I, I actually think it has to be part of going out and discussing what, what the committee is proposing to do. So we have these reasons why we think going from open town meeting to um, town council would improve efficiency, would improve engagement, would give people better better ways to have their voice heard. Certainly different groups have their voice heard. Um, but I think if you went out there first and tried to gather just sort of generalized, gee, what do you think? And is it good, bad, or indifferent? I don't think you'd get very valuable information. Respectfully, I'll recall that in the last meeting, the Collins Center was the one who recommended that we do that. And they suggested that we have groups of two of us go and make a sample, have, have some conversations. And I've been doing that just literally to inform myself. And there's a lot of very rich opinions that people have people know all about town council. I mean, apparently this is being this has been discussed for really over well over a decade on Nantucket, and uh, people have opinions. And I think that we should sample those opinions and bring them in here so that our our process is more robust. How are, how would you get a scientific? I, uh, Jeremy, um, Jeremy, hang on a second. Sorry, Rachel, next. Um, so I agree with Caroline and yes, I think the public and the engagement and getting feedback from them is definitely part of this process. It's a hundred percent a part of the process. They're the ones who would be voting on moving or not. But I think from the start, that's not the right way to go. Because if I start those conversations and somebody asks me, well, what happens with the airport commission or what happens with the fi finance committee? I don't necessarily have that answer. Because we don't have, like what Joe is saying, that proactive movement or what Bo is saying, what our charter actually says right now and what we do. So I almost feel like we need to know those steps. And maybe that's where we go to the item about the Collins and break that down. But we also need to sit down and say, OK, right now, here's three chairs of three commissions or boards and invite them to our meeting. And right now, this is what the charter says and how you operate. Let's get your feedback. And the way we look at it under a council, this could be how you would now operate or where you would fold into or whatever and get their feedback on that. But I don't think until we do that level of in-depth proactive moving of what exactly is changing in our charter and where those things are moving, can we even talk to people? Because when I have certain conversations, they ask me some things of, well, what happens with this? I don't know. I don't have that answer without... I mean, I, I keep referencing Collins simply because I liked the way they laid out their things versus mm -hmm. the other one. So obviously I'm in support of going with them, but at least they would help guide us to say, these are some of the key people we need to talk to. And it's great. We've talked to Libby a little bit. We have Tom here from Select Active Select Board right now, but there's a lot of other groups and commissions and boards that are just interior right now that I think we don't know where they fall. And how does it look right now in the charter? What would it look like? And then going there and then getting some of that public input. Because I, I think if we're doing too much of it and getting the public input ahead of time, I would afraid we're going to come off as not knowing what we're doing or the answers. And they're going to say, well, they don't really know the answers, but they're recommending this. So this is a bad idea. And we're failing it before we even start it, if that makes sense. 
Uh, I think actually, Jeremy, we're at, at Jeremy and Don, I think, and sorry, Jeff, I, I'm trying to make, remember, keep things in reasonable order. Jeremy, did you have a comment or question? Uh, well, I, I suppose, you know, the comment is really about sequencing. At what point do we do this? And I think that when you're trying to do something complex, you need to make some progress before you sort of unleash it all to everybody else. And so I think we really have to be careful on the sequence of doing this. And, and while doing a, an outreach program and getting people's perspective and then fine tuning, I think is really, really important. I think we got to get a, some critical mass. And I think as Curtis was laying out before, we, need, we almost need to, well, we have to follow what our charter is. And the charter is to develop a recommendation on this form of government. So m my suggestion is either these things be done in parallel or we just have a, a sequence where we put these things, um, you know, uh, uh, um, doing these various focus groups we do them down the road once we've made a little more progress. Well, if I can but just interrupt, may, maybe this is a good point to, to sort of remind everybody that this might be one of the best reasons for engaging the Collins Center to kind of help us in, within this process. They've dealt with other committees like ours. They've dealt with other towns that have, you know, representative town meeting, open town meeting, con yeah. uh, considering changing, um, and they may... I would think, as opposed to the nine of us or 12, 11 of us, um, be able to provide much a much more knowledgeable framework about what are the steps you ought to consider. How do you you know how do you create the new charter, which is sort of a legal ad admin function as I see it, and how do you come up with a uh, communications and outreach sort of program that can incorporate exactly what Caroline you're talking about? I mean, you know, gathering information about people's attitudes as well as communicating that this committee is out there doing this work and trying to, you know, form the best solution possible. So anyway, um, just my a comment. Sorry, cut you off, Donna. Oh, that's fine. Actually, that is what I was going to suggest is, um, first of all, we have to decide, we're going back to step one, are we going to move forward or are we going to say, no, we don't want to do this? Secondly, the Collins um, Institute, um, I thought, presented a really good case as to how they can assist us in PR, in outreach, um, in developing the administrative part of um, uh, our mission, if this is if we are going to move forward, um, I I think we we have to make that decision first, and then employ um, Collins, and they can direct us and provide the necessary guidance and expertise. Okay, well, I think you were next. Um, I agree with Rachel, and the thing is this, we have to become the authoritative figure, this group, it has to become the people who know the most about the Charter, and to do that, you have to do work, you have to look at Charter, you have to say, okay, you now let's look at what we have, and then you form an opinion on it. And only then can you actually sell it. So that's what you're gonna do. Are you talking about selling sort of the new chart? I mean, yeah. the, the theoretical new the charter? theoretical new charter. Okay, okay. I, I agree with that. Sure. I was just gonna say, to be super blunt, we already have a basic public opinion. Is this article passed town meeting by voice vote? It wasn't mm -hmm. by hand vote or by the electronic counter. It was a voice vote. So mm -hmm. I, I think there's a certain public appetite that we have to honor at the same time that town meeting and a uh, voice majority of voters in that room have asked us to put this forward and do it and to do the exercise. And I, I totally agree that there's work to be done by looking at the existing charter and, and looking at new charters and doing that comparison. But I 100% agree with Rachel that doing it in the right order is important, but I think we have enough information already that there's an appetite enough that people want to see what it would look like to make an informed choice. And that's what town meeting did last year. Good point. Um, just thinking, and maybe this question isn't being asked, but to me, I'm not at the point where this is absolute, whether we choose to move forward or not. Like, I feel like no matter what we keep moving forward, 
and this feels like a, an amazing opportunity to put resources towards looking at how our town should be governed. And even if we don't, in the end, decide to propose a new charter, we have still done some legwork for future work. And that seems like a that seems like a great pro of this, even if we don't all the way if even if we don't get to that final outcome of putting a charter together. So I maybe that question isn't on the table, but I don't really feel any need to quell this conversation and decide that because some of us don't think town council is right, we stop. Um mm -hmm. all right. Joe, sure. your move. Well, um, I, I guess I would like a straw poll then. I mean, uh, of the of the folks that are on the committee, um, you know, what's your pleasure here? I mean, I, I, I'll just I'll say I, I think we're going to move forward with um, creating a, a town council form of government as as outlined in the charter for the committee, and I think that that ought to be our direction and our our focus. Um, I second that. I third that. <laughs> Could I ask a point of order? Oh, I don't know if you make Kurt, Okay, hold, hold your hold. <laughs> Kurt, Kurt, let's go for it. Um, I, I don't. See, by the way, I just I just say I don't see this as like a binding, you know, formal vote. I just think we ought to know kind of where Strug. the group stands. Sorry, a struggle. Uh, Sorry, I was curious what the Collins proposal was dollar wise. You said it was available. Um, yes, they uh, they proposed a a contract for twenty thousand dollars plus some hourly rates if they go over the, the number of hours they anticipated. Um, participating, um, they did it in terms of the number of meetings that they would actually attend or be part of. Uh, it was 10 meetings for $20,000. I, um, I can tell you that, you know, uh, you know, Libby felt that the town has the resources to support that. Um, I think, as I said earlier in the meeting, uh, I sent some, some editorial changes to their proposal to make it a little more specific to deal with less about sort of general knowledge about town governments and more about public outreach and as one big chunk and creating the new charter as a second so sort of big chunk. part of the objective. Well, it, it's sort of, I think, I think it can be shaped based on how we want to go, but um, again, somewhat speaking, I guess more for myself, I think the two big chart, two big tasks we have left are actually creating the new charter for a town council form and creating an outreach program to communicate it to the town. And uh, because I don't, you know, you need both. Um, yeah. And then the Collins Center, if there are questions along the way in terms of what about this, what about that, they certainly have the expertise uh, in terms of regulation, law, what the experience of other towns to help us with those sort of um, speed bumps, I will. So I'm sorry. Thank you. So do we? Make a oh, motion. And I, to I, accept. I just have to say, I have. Uh, we have to. You know, there's some paperwork that has to be done. I've got to go to the select board. Um, you're all welcome to join me, but I have to go to the select board and kind of give them an update um, in in about three or four weeks. So are you on the agenda, polls. or will you? Not yet. I mean, it, it's going to depend a little bit on um, paperwork, and okay. I, th I think it's either the the last meeting in March or the first in April would be where I would go. Okay. And we could go with you. You could certainly go, but I, it's it's for. I forget what this we can part of the agenda. We, we a little, there's like a little, uh, yes, pending contract and a little update to the select board as to what we're doing. Um, I'm assuming that, this, that the Collins Center will start work before we get all the paperwork done. Jesus. Um, I'm sorry, did we, I lost track of where we, did you, you get you said what you want to say? Question, okay. I'll, hell, I'll pay half of it if I have to. Well, <laughs> may I call a point of order? I mean, we, we've been bid to have a straw vote. We were in the middle of the straw vote. The chairman gave his vote before anyone else did. And um, I, you know, I'm aware, I think, Jeff, your point about this was voted on. And so that that really is the dictate. And that gives us our peace of mind that this is what we're supposed to be doing. And I, I understand that and I respect it. And that's why I, you know, I applied to be on this committee because I wanted to be involved in that process. I just want to clarify that I think part of that process includes, as the Collins Center did tell us, um, that there's two parts, two very different parts to um, focus groups. I don't know what else we would call them, but there's the first, first part of it, which should be happening now, which is us going around and absorbing, since we're representative of the voters, um, 
absorbing what people's attitudes are. And that's not because they're experts in the government or in how town meeting might be running. It's because they're the voters and there's a culture on Nantucket and we must be respectful of that too. Um, because of course, ultimately, whether this is received, that is our concern. Um, well, and it's also our concern whether this is going to fit there, there's the necessity of exploring unintended consequences of ending town meeting. I mean, town meeting does certain things for us that town council won't be doing. And so I think it's our job to sort through all of that. It's certainly our job. It's not anybody else's job. Um, because then when we make our decisions, our recommendations, we will have to be as aware of that as... Um, uh, we'll have to be experts in that as well. So I feel that it's um, premature to take a straw vote. I mean, of course, we all want to know how we're all feeling. It's part of our group process, of course. But just in terms of respecting the process, um, we've had the Collins Center, who we're planning, it sounds like, to hire, recommend that we take a temperature. Um, there are me methods to do that that are established. They can help us with that. And then later on, once we come up with our recommendations, then we go and have a totally different kind of focus group, which is more educative and informing the voters of what we're recommending and why and what the pros and cons are. I agree with Kelly. I'm, I'm still myself. Um, I have not found enough for myself salience between the pros and cons and the unintended consequences. So just to put that out there. Well, my apologies. As the chair, I probably shouldn't have straw voted first. So that was my bad. Um, well, I, I would still like to know what what's, what the sense of the committee is. I mean, I you know, in terms of are people um, do you want to take a vote to take a vote? I would, I would write <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, the sense of the committee and, the, and for the members of the committee who don't quite. Oh, that's good. Oh, how do I sound? Is it, who aren't quite ready to like you know sign on the dotted line? I, I guess I would like to know what other things we might engage in that would make you more comfortable or would you know um, um, sort of lessen your doubts or whatever you're going. Right. Right. But I, I'm going to go to Jeff first to do that. I, mean, I, I think to to split the difference here. I, I think the question isn't necessarily which form of government do you prefer. I think the question that we're almost at is more of a are we prepared to start drafting the council for town charter that's been asked of us at town meeting? Because I know where I stand. I've probably spent as much time or more than anyone on our existing charter and other charters in the last three years. But I do think to have that comparison for having to people, I think you have to have the two things for people to compare. And right now we have what's existing. We have what has been talked about but nothing really exists there yet. I think you have to have both. And I I understand that people aren't going to be comfortable with saying I'm 100% behind one way or another until they have those to do it. But I think we have to do it. And then we can compare. And ultimately, the decision isn't going to be those of us here that are going to say, well, we're making the change for sure. The voters are still going to have to go and do it. But... I think what town meeting has asked us to do is do the work, create what we've asked you to create, prepare comparative documents essentially to explain the differences and give us the informed choice. And if you guys create a level of expertise to help inform that choice, even better, because that's what we're asking you to do. But they're asking us to do what the article said us to do. Yeah. And they voted in majority to do so. And if this were any other warrant article, and I understand the gravity of this, just to be clear, if this were any other warrant article that was asked to be done and it wasn't done, I would anticipate town meeting to be able to hold you accountable for why you didn't do the job that town meeting legislated you to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the whole function of town meeting is they say, we want you to do this. If you don't do it. Mm -hmm then what's the consequence and the accountability of not doing it? And that, to me, is where I think we have to move forward. 
Do you, uh, Jeff, do you think that with 10 sessions from the mm -hmm. Collins Center and the expertise that we have here and our all of our willingness to work and dig in, it's it is so big. We have there's so much in complexity. And I've one of the things I've been wondering is do we have enough to get it all sorted? Okay, so what is your opinion? My personal opinion yeah. is yes. Okay. I believe we do. I mean, we're we're not inventing government from scratch, right? This is stuff where all these forms of government are, are pretty well known and pretty well documented. You know, I know we talked about it through the Collins Center where we're talking about potentially pivoting to the form of government that is most common in the United States. So there's lots of comparatives. There's there. I know not anywhere is Nantucket. But, you know, not anywhere is is Boston or Martha's Vineyard or Elkhart, Indiana or Amarillo, Texas, wherever you're going. Right. Is everywhere is different and unique. And all of these documents and charters will have, of course, for everywhere that keeps people unique in their space. But the basic form and function is pretty well understood. So I, I, I truly believe bringing in experts like Collins, having citizens that are participant that provide their own expertise to this that to get a document that gets you ready enough to have a larger public discussion is absolutely an achievable goal for this group. And that's what the point of the charter is, is the overall, yeah. and then the bylaws will provide the uniqueness. Correct. So we don't right. have to get into the bylaws. We're just here to do the well, big I overall also, umbrella stuff. And I also think that's part of what the, the advantage of the Collins Center is that yeah. this group, yes. We can't write all this stuff. I don't think any of we're none of us are lawyers. We're not going to be able to sit there and go through, you know, right. nodding eyes and crossing T's. I mean, we may, <clears throat> I, I think I know what you'd say, but <laughs> um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, you're young. Have you used okay. Chat GPT? Yeah. Okay. Well, with AI now, you can basically summarize documents, legal documents. So you could take, any chart, summarize all the points, extract what you want, and that's a perfect tool. Perfect. Mm -hmm. well, I wish we could use AI to go assess how all the Nantucketers feel. Well, you can, <laughs> and I've thought about this. You can do it via video, so video text. <laughs> and you could take three years worth of Google, uh, YouTube data, basically, and just distill it. And that's one way to actually assess what's going on. But what about speaking to them? You would absolutely speak to them. If you want to do that, I mean, it seems like that's what you want to do. Well, I, I, no, I know I do want to do it because it's helping to inform me, but I'm wondering about our, our group. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're going to have to do that. But we actually need to, like I said, yeah. we need to actually do the work. Yeah, so I think what I am understanding is we are we are congealing around our task is to come up with an excellent proposal for a town council alternative for Nantucket and then trot that out to Nantucketers and show them the difference. At the same time, we ourselves have informed ourselves of the pros and cons, all the unintended consequences where we will be speaking to all of them. And will we need to be selling one or the other it sounds like that's part of our task i mean that's what it sounds I, like the I think, bias i think if you're, if you're going to go forward you have to be willing to sell the idea yeah uh, but what if we discover in our process that there are some intended consequences gonna, that are hard to sell you're going to have they to, all yeah, yeah. And i hope we do any form of government you're going to have conflicts and that's just part of the deal but you really have to dig in on what we're proposing mm -hmm. and the various checks and balances and things that are in place already within it, whether they're implicit or explicit, like separation of powers, like uh, non-delegation principle, where you can't delegate off your duty. Those things are just inherent in every American constitution or charter. And you're going to have to basically, if there's a conflict, if we recognize there's a conflict right now, then we can correct it. All right. Um, we have one member of the public up there that that is asking to ask a question. So, um, Hillary, you've been very patient. Um, fire away. 
Yes, thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to contribute that um, I voted um, for this article at town meeting. Um, and I voted for it because I wanted the topic studied, not because I was supporting necessarily a town council. Um, and I, I'm, I imagine I'm probably not alone. So I just wanted to share that um, because it seems to be a factor in the decision making of how to approach the problem that, you know, you got a, a request to implement a town charter, bring it, you know, create it, bring it to town meeting. But I think there were a lot of people who were just curious and interested in a study. And I was one of them. Can I just, I, I think that's what we are doing. We, we're not saying we are moving to a council. This is what it's going to look like. And this is why you need to approve it. What we're saying is we're studying it right now. This is what we, we don't know what it's going to be. We need the document. We need to know, like Jeff said, this is what we have. This is where we would go and then get the feedback of why people are feeling that that's a good thing or not, what the problems we're trying to address, how we're addressing them, how we're not. And then we put that forward and then people vote on it. And you voted on it, Hillary. So yes, we're studying it. And then when we bring forward what our idea is, you might look at it and say, I don't agree with this form of government. I want to stay with town meeting and you would vote no. I mean, I I, I don't, I think that's what we're doing. Yes. I don't think we're. Yeah, I, I, I mean, except that I guess the way I see that is we are specifically going to create Just the, the, article, council, not the article that the committee's charter yes. has asked us to create that will give the citizens a, a vote on yay or nay town council. Right. I mean, yeah. Um, Mr. We Chair, can could I just ask a question? Sure. Mr. Chair, could I, sorry, I, I joined just a few minutes late and I know the first item on the agenda was um, feedback on whether, was there an answer to the question of if this, of how much, how closely um, this, charter study group has to cleave to the town council was there an answer i know you were going to talk to the town manager and town council um i think i think the answer has and i think it would the committee would agree with me is our charter is to create a, a an article that recommends converting to town council not uh you know representative town meeting or staying at at um, um at an open town meeting i think if if the group came to the conclusion that town council was not appropriate, we would, as Curtis said earlier, we would just sort of say we've come to no conclusion and disband ourselves. So mm -hmm. go for it. Okay, thank, thank you. And, okay, is that, oh, is that okay, Hilary? Thanks. And Pamela, I see your hands up. I'm sorry, I'll get to you next. Okay, um, Curtis. When I got back from my trip and I sat down and watched the YouTube of the February uh, 7 meeting that I missed. And um, I wrote a couple of notes, but one of the questions that I heard was, where do we go from here? I think you raised that question. So I outlined some thoughts. I made copies for everyone. Um, you can look at them or not, but um, Again, it does go back to the question of uh, our purpose is to establish the uh, a town council form of government or not, yes or no. But without going through all of these, one of the items on my memo to myself was, as the committee develops this proposed legislation, extensive outreach efforts should be undertaken to reach out to the Nantucket community for information and feedback. Included in these efforts should be a wide range of area civic organizations, the Civic League, Sconset Civic Association, Rotary Club, School Committee, the Builders Association, Chamber of Commerce, non-voting taxpayers, as well as local newspapers and social media. Now the question or the point we're all discussing is, we're gonna reach out to a lot of people, a lot of groups um, as part of our job. But what are we gonna say? We're proposing a town council to uh, be the legislative body of the town. It can meet every two or three weeks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We don't have anything to say yet until we formulate our proposal 
and then we're going to go out. But to go out and say to the Rotary Club, what do you think about a town council? And they're going to say, what do you mean? What's in it? What do you got? We don't got anything yet. So we need to go to the next step of putting together our ideas, and then we reach out. And as part of that, we will be getting feedback, I know, but we got to have something to start with. Fair enough. Thank you. Pamela, sorry, you've been waiting. <clears throat> um, thank you, Joe. And I want to totally agree with what was just said. My main concern is, yes, you know, focus groups will happen and that's a wonderful thing. I have a lot of concern with doing a survey. I've worked professionally with survey design in the past. A well-designed survey could give us, could, could provide education and could give great feedback on something that you've already sort of laid out, as it was just said, because questions could be formulated that would allow the population to think long and hard about did they really grasp those huge Warren articles? How many meetings did they actually go to the old way? But you're presenting in the survey, you know, you're not just saying we're going to go to a town council, but you're presenting some of the components of that. So people can think about the opportunities to attend meetings throughout the year, the opportunities for certain things to be addressed much quicker. I loved the sewer example. I think you can lay out um, outreach and education and and get feedback in a very great way, um, but it has to be done, you know, with a lot of thought, and it has to be done properly. And it's a little premature until you guys come up with a first crack at the plan. That plan could be resolved. You know, resolved. They may come back and say, "We want that structure where we still get to have one meeting a year, um, but we want a town council." And maybe that meeting is just as was said to to gripe about certain things. But um, I think this is moving. I, I'm really impressed with how the group is moving forward. Um, and I'm, I really think it's important to stay to the task that the town already voted on investigating this. And that's what you all are doing. Thank you, Peggy. Um, Joe, I think Lucy had a Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was, didn't know. I was waiting to. Oh, no, no, no. You're, 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 yeah, so sorry. I didn't, look, I didn't look yeah. to my left. No worries. No worries. Um, so I was at that town meeting. Who are you? Lucy Hehern. Just for Thank you. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. Um, and, you know, I do feel people were going to vote against this committee. Like, but then so, um, one of the select board stood up and she said, it's just an exploratory committee. And then that day was voted. But um, so I had a couple of questions like uh, the feedback that you got in December, why it's not working. Was there a feedback? Like, was that a survey? Was there feedback why it was working? Or like, is it all just? It was It was the, just... the, 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 the meeting we had where we discussed sort of the shortcomings of town meeting and what people liked about town meeting. Um, and that you, just came if, if you go, if you could go back through the minutes that are on the right. website. No, I was, didn't know if the public was. No, it was, okay. just, it was just our group. I mean, there were some people on the. Right. You're like you were here, but it was just a small number. Yeah, it was an open public meeting. Yeah. So yeah. well, no, yeah, but was there public people that was there people coming on? Not well, too, not too many that I remember, right. Lucy, but you know. Because one of the things that the town meeting, like for me, you know, is that um the articles are so confusing. So, like, is there a way of explaining the article articles before we go to the town meeting? You know, like educating the public before we get to the town meeting to streamline it. And I just wanted to also say, like that, John Giorgio. Is that his name? Mm -hmm. He said, like last uh, last meeting, that you know, if it's not broken, why fix it? And then maybe explore like two town meetings or even more. You know, like so they were just good options. Mm -hmm. And um, what was the other one? Yeah, Pat said that from the Collins Center. She said, you know, compared to other places in the in Massachusetts, that we actually do have good turnout for town meetings. So I'm just putting those up there. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. May I respond to one, yeah. one, one minor part of that? Um, one thing I was going to mention before of something we should really do before we, uh, whether the Collins Center happens or not, or when it happens, but I think there's a key, a couple key folks in the town that we should have asked to come and speak to us um, and have and get their um, takes on a bunch of stuff, including exactly what, what Lucy just brought up, especially the town moderator, who knows more about town meetings than anybody, 
Um, Nancy Holmes, town clerk, Brian Turbot, finance director, John Brescher, the chair of the town government study committee, and Leslie Snell, director of planning. Um, I, I think that between those folks, and, and, and I know that would be a lot of meetings and what have you, but um, through outreach in whatever way, if they can't come to a meeting, we could get a lot of our questions answered by uh, those five people. <clears throat> it's pretty interesting, especially that's, Sarah. That's a, that's a really interesting suggestion. Yeah. I'm sorry, just you said Brian, Sarah, Nancy, Sarah, Brian, Nancy, Leslie, John Brescher. And, and I do I like John. the idea of going out talking to people because it's conversations that we learn from people and it gives people, you know, and we don't need to know all the answers. If we're asked a question, we don't need to know, you know, we, we, we don't know. And one other comment, know. Mr. Chair, one thing that came up when we had a Carolyn, you and I had a back and forth in this in one of our meetings about survey. Pamela brought this up too about survey research. And um, something we did at the Affordable Housing Trust Fund was we had Judy Barrett from Barrett Planning come in and we did focus groups around year round deed restriction program. And that was very carefully crafted. And um, Barrett Planning, Judy is very adept at that and knows how to account for bias. And those groups were confidential, so people could mm -hmm. speak mm -hmm. their minds. And so we got a report in the aggregate, aggregate, but we never saw, you know, Tom said what I wasn't there when Tom said what in mm -hmm. in, in X meeting. Um, so that that's something I, I don't think because of bias and a number of other concerns that yes, we can speak anecdotally and you know, my neighbor said and whatever, but I don't think all of us should go out and speak to 20 people a piece and then come back and present that. That is not the way this should happen. I'm not saying anybody suggested that, but yeah. Uh, Joe? Yes, Donna. Yeah, I, I think we should go back to what our, what we were asked to do. I think we have to go back to that. Are we going to move forward? And um, or or are we going to decide as a committee that this is not worthwhile? And then we can do through um, assistance uh, with the Collins group, we can address all those issues. We can address the whole thing about surveys. We can address um, outreach in many different forms, confidential and not whatever. But I think we're, we have to go back to do we want to move forward with this? Or do we, the more we diffuse our approach, we're not going to move anywhere. Well, I, I guess I would, I, I don't know what the rest of you think, but I, I would say that the leaning is for going forward. I'm, I'm, we never quite finished the straw poll, but just right. around the room, I, it seems to me that a majority of us, I'm sorry, did you have a? Yeah, if we don't interrupt you, but I do want to have. Okay, let me get back to you if you don't mind. Um, it seems to me that of the nine voting members of this group, I think five or more are four going forward. I think the other three or four who have some doubts and we don't need to, you know. Um, I wouldn't characterize it that way. Okay. You. I would just say that we're in the middle of our process and I um, I appreciate Donna's, you know, trying to get us to go maybe a little faster, but I think we're doing a great job right here in the process trying to figure out, I mean, I'm, I'm learning a lot right here in our conversation about, oh, Right, we did vote on this, and so this is our job, and part of the job is that we are going to produce the two charters next to each other. We will all be seeing pros, cons, unintended consequences, all of that. Our process will continue each time we meet so that by the time we're rolling it out, whether it's in the newspaper or at NCL or wherever, we will only be able to do the best job we can representing it as an option that then of course gets voted upon. So I yes. think that we're in the middle of that process and it's not fair to characterize us as being some for or some against. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. Um, right. I just, that motion, hang on one second. That motion should, should be withdrawn and the second should be withdrawn for to be proper. I mean, nobody really made a motion, but I think- For what, the straw poll vote? Yeah. If, if that's- your purview, yeah. but that, I think I it should the be. Chair can I, make I a guess vote I was. Anyways. I was not seeing it as a formal on the okay. record vote, but um, we have just to be formal. I have a motion to withdraw the straw poll vote. I think you can. You can just say motion withdrawn, and whoever second it can say okay. yes. Second. I, I withdraw my motion okay. and second. Okay. Just to, to to be formally appropriate. Yeah. Um, 
Yes, you, you have a question, sir. Yes. Can, I, can you identify yourself, please? Yes, I will. My name's uh, Theodore Gilletti, and I live in, in town here, a uh, year-round resident. Um, I, I agree uh, with what um, Lucy and, and also Hillary have said, that um, w when this um, item was brought up at the town meeting, um, the um, understanding that I believe that we all had was it was exploratory. But yet what I'm hearing today is um, an effort essentially by yourself, Mr. Chairman, to push forward uh, an adoption of an approach towards a town council. Maybe I'm not right, but in what I've heard, but that's what I think I'm hearing. And rather what I'd like to see is um, a full explanation after having considered the pros and cons of town meeting and examining what can we do to fix it, to make it better. Because if you already have it, to upend it completely in favor of something else, which is gonna be brand new, is, is almost akin like putting a, a new core processing system in a, in a company's operations. It's, it's mammoth. And, and it may have unintended con consequences that you're not even aware, um, aside from the costs. Um, I I think some of the references, for example, like to consideration of, of sewer decisions, uh, those are things which I've seen in other towns. It takes a lot of time to make a, a decision on what's going to happen in terms of sewer planning. So I don't think that's really an appropriate way to criticize the, the select board and the whole process. And, and quite frankly, every select board meeting has an opportunity for public comments. Um, we all know that. Anybody who wants to come can make public comments. I, I personally don't think that non-citizens have actually any right to make comments. Full-time residents, part-time um, people who live here and pay taxes, absolutely, no question. And they have the ability to address the select board or any of the other commissions or committees. There's nothing stopping them from doing that. So. I think we have to be very careful in rushing ahead. I think we have to look at a very balanced approach and examine a town meeting, which is really unique. Um, and I would hate to see an experience uh, befalling uh, this committee, um, like what happened at the Air Commission, Air Airport Commission the other night. That was a disaster. Well, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I appreciate your input. Um, I refer you to Article 81 uh, from last year's town meeting. And I think that is the charter that formed this committee, and it does not really give us the uh, latitude to just study various forms of government. It specifically directs that we create an article for a future town meeting to give the voters the chance to, so to either vote for or against the town council. So that's that's. I will I will freely admit that I am personally believe that town council is the right solution for Nantucket, yeah. but. Well, the committee's charter is to go in that direction, not not to just simply be a study committee. So, I, I thank you, Mr. Chairman, and and I think that that's an issue that you have to really make sure then the, the voting public and the residents here understand fully. Well, can I just echo what you said? I and mean, this is the, I'm looking at the Article Eighty One, if you got Twenty Three, any town meeting. Well, it specifically says to form a or Specifically, specifically does not say form a charter. It says special committees shall consider any structural or administrative details of the town council, including but not limited to the number of members, the town council, that's a charter, how the council might represent the voters in Nantucket, qualifications necessary to hold a seat on the town council, internal organization of the town council, that's a charter, compensation of council members, that's a charter, any other characteristics of structure and process of the proposed town council as may be recommended. So all those things are going to be. Any of that that yet. recommendation, not right. the article that I put in it was amended. Right. Um, do we have any other, in terms of kind of where we are, I, I, I get the impression that we're, the group is ready to sort of move forward and, and uh, get a little more specific with um, kind of stru structuring a solution as well as coming up with a public outreach and the, and the components of what a public outreach could be. Um, 
what do we want to talk about next time? I mean, I I hang on. Uh, I, I I personally like some of Tom's suggestions about seeing whether we can get some um, executives across the town to come and give us their impressions. And um, I but I have to tell you that the next meeting would I think two weeks would be March twentieth. I can't be here. I'm going to be in the hospital that day. Um, hmm. So um, I'm not going away. Like again, so you're not. Like so you so so, we, we, <laughs> so Jeff, we can right run here. the meeting again. Yeah. <laughs> we'll send you flowers. I won't, I won't be in there for the <laughs> stay surgery. Um, I was supporting your idea that Tom had some good thoughts, and uh, I think if we invited a couple of those people to visit with us, it would be helpful. All right. Also, we're planning to meet with the Civic League after that meeting. Yep. So we should talk about what we're going to be saying to them because it's right now it sounds like it's still up in the air what we would say. Um, I think I could come up with a two page, two or three page PowerPoint, but I, I would, I, but I think it should be from the group, not the well, group. I would share with the group. I'm just saying, but I, I'm saying in the next meeting, how about we talk about sure. what we might well, maybe the Civic League would want to ask us questions, right? But what are we going to be saying to the Civic League? If we want to sell. Okay. okay, so March 20th, we'll try to get a couple of the town executives to come and talk to us about their impressions. Um, I don't know whether the Holland Center will be sort of on board by then or not. I, I will do my best. Um, and I'm sorry, what was the last? Joe? Yes, Jeremy. Um, certainly putting together a uh, comparative legal analysis side by side. How can we get that started? Because that will, you know, everybody's going to want to sink their teeth into that. And again, that's something that can be done. Well, I, I would tell you that to me is one of the perfect tasks for a group like the Collins Center. They're going to be Agreed. able to, you know, they're going to be able to take the current Nantucket Town Charter um, and sort of administrative or organizational structure and select, I don't, you know, town of X from the, the rest of the state that is already town council and, you know, use that as sort of a way to map across what Nantucket has today to how it would look in a town council structure. Um, I just think it's a lot easier to let them do that as a first step, and then we can, with this committee, can react to it as opposed to, you know, trying to do that detail work ourselves. I think you're right. I agree. Okay. Um, all right. So next meeting is the 20th. Uh, Jeff, you're going to chair. In the interim, um, Jeff, let's, I'll, I'll put my head together with you or anybody else who wants to get involved and uh, so try to invite some of these, the folks that we talked about. Um, I will con hope I will keep you all updated as to, by email over the next two weeks as to where we stand with the Collins Center. Um, by the way, Joe, you may recall, I asked Libby a couple of meetings ago when she yeah. was talking to us to do the, something similar. And she bowed out by saying that um, in government, one guy's benefits, another guy's problem. And so, because I'd asked her whether she could define some of the problems this might solve, and she sort of begged off on that issue. Well, we can certainly ask that question of the, the folks that we took, you know, um, um, you know, Sarah Alger or anybody else that we can get to come to that meeting. So, yeah, no, well, I, I would, I would, I would get some other be, input. It would be great to get the input. I'm just giving you that that former perspective. Okay. Mr. Chair, I think that's very similar. Olibi has a much different and more broad job that like asking me that question, I'd say the same thing. But if you went to Libby and said, hey, how will this change the structure of the way finance works with blah, blah, blah. You know, she, I'm sure she'd answer. I, I can't speak for her, of course, but it, that, that, that's a, it was a pretty broad question for her to dip into on that. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Anybody have any other subjects, suggestions for future meetings? Okay. Um, everybody okay with every other week still? So we go March 20th. I don't know what, whatever they go from there. Wednesday is still good. I know they're not as great, good for you, Tom, but um, sorry. Yes. All right. They're all one yes. meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Just, uh, one meeting. Can I have a motion to adjourn then? So move, Mr. Chair. Second. Second. Curtis? Aye. Bo? Aye. Tom? Aye. Donna? Yes. Jeremy? Aye. Jeff? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Rachel? Aye. Caroline? Aye. Joe? Aye.
Thank you all. Um, Thank you. I will be here in spirit on the 20th. Good luck. So. Good luck.